Studio W, where we occasionally do words at Studio W when we have an occasion to bring a Wallingford celeb uh, to your attention. He won't be a Wallingford celeb for long. Oral Afouri of the African Dream, who creates and curates information associated with the African Dream. We want to know what his dream is and what the African Dream is. He is also here with Catherine this evening, um, part of his dream, I believe. So, Oral, please tell us. <laughs> What part of Africa are you from, and uh, what is the African dream to you? Thanks for having me, Susan. It's a pleasure to be here, and thanks for allowing me to bring Catherine in. I'm originally from West Africa in Ghana. Ghana is um, one of the first sub-Saharan countries to obtain independence from British colonial rule. This happened in 1957, and um, I was uh, born in the uh, port city of Tema in Ghana, which is one of the biggest port cities in West Africa. and. Um, I studied journalism with the London School of Journalism, and I came out here to the U.S. to pursue an internship with the Voice of America in Washington, D.C. And um, after my internship, I decided to stay on and do freelance work, and I ended up, you know, pursuing my journalism career further and further here in the States. I started doing the African Dream in um, 2010, late 2010. I tried to capture happiness in Africa or outside Africa, including here in the diaspora in the U.S. and anywhere else where you find Africans that, you know, are doing well, but for some reason are not known, you know, so I just seek them out. I use the internet. It's a great tool for me, and um, I search some of these people out. Sometimes other people talk about them to me, and I go looking for them, but basically I just try to bring their work to the fore, you know, as part of the African dream, and the African dream the African dream is where I try to tell the African story from an African perspective, you know, because there's been a saying, you know, an old African saying that goes, until the lion learns to speak, the hunter would always glorify the hunt. Do you feel you're part of a tradition of storytellers? When I think of Africa, I think of a tradition of storytelling. Do you feel that you're following a tradition of storytelling? In a way, you can say that we, we are used to being able to tell stories, being able to give you know anecdotes that are not only entertaining but also have messages that tell a moral story or in a way satirizes a situation in the society that is not you know pleasant. But yeah, I I'd say I come from a long line of storytellers, story and so <laughs> maybe being a journalist was you know a subtle way of me going back into what I was really you know made of. So yeah. A lot of your stories are actually about Africans that are no longer in Africa. Like yourself, you are here in America. Right. When you started hashtag the African dream, did you expect to be finding your African dream stories outside of Africa? Um, when I started the whole concept of the African dream, I was hoping to get most of my stories coming from within the African continent. And um, when I ended up here in the state, I, I felt like I was exposed to a, and, and privileged to a lot of resources that would help me tell that story. But as I went along the line, I realized that it was going to be very, very possible to also look beyond Africa. One of the reasons I was doing that was because it was easy to communicate between countries that are well-developed information technology-wise. So While you were in Wallingford, you tried to connect Ghana and Wallingford together. Right. Uh, how did that happen, and was it successful? It was very successful, thanks to WPAA-TV. <laughs> and um, it happened just as a result of, you know, certain things falling into the right place at the right time. And I was just lucky to have had the opportunity to do the interviews that I did here at WPA TV that were connected to the African dream. I mean, let's take the, um, the interview I did with Bless Donje. We'd like to say good evening to our audience, and tonight we're going to have a taste of the African relationship with the um, community out here in Wallenford. And we have in our studio Bless Donji, who is with the um, Bauer Health Initiative in Cameroon, which is in West Africa. Welcome to our studios, Bless. It was, it was just like happenstance. I totally didn't see it coming, but it happened and it worked out well. There was a connection to the community, there was a strong connection to Africa, and, you know, it really, you know, was a situation that presented a perfect picture for what the African dream is all about, which is, you know, 
seeing and hearing all the good things that Africans are doing outside the continent here in the diaspora and then sending that picture back home to you know Africans in their respective countries so they see what it is like out here and I, I felt like I felt very privileged to have you know had that opportunity and also I had the opportunity to um, interview a Ghanaian music group called Keche right here in WPA TV again they um, were um, touring the state and they had a concert in New York for some reason they were lodging with friends in um, Connecticut and so I spoke with them on the phone and they decided to yeah stop by and um, do this interview which and, and they taught us a little bit of Catchy <laughs> dancing, which was really right. quite quite in interesting. It Again, a narrative, a storytelling form right. of of uh, interacting. Okay, I want you to remember. Yeah, yeah, you it. Go, 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 go. Uh, that was a, a great, great day here at, at WPA. Um, another interview was with Brian Opel, right. who happened to be in Connecticut shortly after Madiba had passed away, right. and he was one of the eight uh, Nelson Mandela scholars. Tell us where you were and what you were doing when you heard about the death of Nelson Mandela. I was in a town called George, which is on the famous garden route of the Western Cape, which is a route that leads one straight into the Eastern Cape. The Eastern Cape is where Mr. Mandela was born. Right. And I felt that I was closer to him than I would have been had I been in Cape Town. I was virtually as close as I could have been at that moment, and it felt right, because it's sad news, and you will always remember where you were as a right. South African when you received the news of Mr. Mandela's passing. Right. So the timing of that was very was perfect, was perfect yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, we're going to miss not being able to do, have <laughs> you be the host <laughs> interviewing here at, at Words at Studio W. Uh, but we do look forward to you possibly sending us things because Google is your format now and you're yeah. able to interview folks around the world. Yeah. Tell us how that works. Um, you found out about Google, be like most of us, just right. because it is there and they're telling us all the time, use us, use us. What made you actually decide to use that as your format for interviewing folks around the world? One of the main reasons why I chose Google as the medium for me doing interviews for the African Dream was because, one, it was cheap. Google Plus allows for video interviews to be done you know, across the continent. and this video interviews could be recorded as well. So when I discovered that, I was like, oh wow, that, um, that saves me a lot of money. Initially, I would get on the phone and make long distance phone calls with people and interview them. And um, I would end up with stories that would have audio and just text from me writing them. But then when I discovered Google Plus offered video as well, besides you know, just uh, the basic things we used it for, I was like, okay, I'm just going to take it and run away with it. And um, it's, it's been of great help to me because I have been able to speak to people in Glasgow, Scotland, Germany, you know, South Africa, back home in Ghana, and literally all over the world. You just need to you know, discover Google more, and um, <laughs> you could put it to the utmost use. You know. that, but, um, that's really a great tip for our prospective users of WPAA as well yeah. that potentially could uh, use that tool and further their dream, uh, whether it's the African dream, <laughs> the American dream, uh, the dream of storytelling. Right, right. One of the uh, exciting things about your dropping in that day is you, you literally saw the name of on the side of the building, WPA right. TV. You <laughs> said, you, you decided to walk through, and our doors were open. You came in and said, what does this TV thing mean? How can I get involved? And the next day, literally the next day, yeah. you were on set interviewing someone who uh, was from Cameroon. That was an exciting moment here, being able to connect Wallingford with Cameroon and, right. and with you, a new user. Uh, it, it's that simple uh, in, in many ways but also you have to be a local resident. So now we need you to connect with <laughs> us through family and friends that are here in Wallingford. Right, right. Uh, unfortunately, your opportunity is short-lived because you really tried to do something with the school system. The school system had picked Ghana as one of its um, 
communities to connect with and right. get to know better. You offered your uh, services, and the timing apparently just was not right. They right. prioritized other countries, right. and now you will not be available to them readily here in Wallingford uh, to make that happen. Ghana is a English-speaking country. It is. And uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, it's it potentially could be so accessible to the students here in Wallingford, correct? Right. They don't have to extend themselves. The, the all the youth of Ghana mm -hmm. grow up knowing English. Right. Right. It's um, I, I felt a little you know saddened when I realized that um other you know countries have been you know considered over Ghana simply because like you just said Ghana is an English speaking country and it wouldn't be a difficulty as far as the language bar is concerned because there would literally be no language barrier because every kid in school has English as their first language. And so I thought it was going to be a great opportunity for students here in Wallingford to connect with students in Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, so, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> uh, does Catherine agree with you on that? <laughs> she, she has her own opinions. And, uh, <laughs> We are welcoming Catherine back here to Words at Studio W. That's how flexible we need to be <laughs> in order to get our talent um, and share our stories. Again, that microphone is very, very interesting to her. Uh, we're hoping it will be very interesting to folks <laughs> out there in the Wallingford community that, like uh, Oral, may be here just for a very for short time, but have stories to share. Um, so thank you for stopping by this evening. Thank you, Catherine, for stopping by this <laughs> evening. She says, thank you for having me. All right, so that is Words at Studio W, the occasional show about a celeb in Wallingford uh, done by a random host. If you need one of those, check us out at WPA TV.